Here we are continuing with our JavaScript tutorials. We're on uh, tutorial five, I believe. And uh, what we got here is we've got uh, some basic HTML uh, saying hello world. And then we got a picture of Tux as Mario and a little text line here saying filmsbychris.com. Now, if I say change image, it changes image to Tux there. If I say change image back, it changes him back. And I can keep clicking on those all day long. So the HTML, or I'm sorry, the JavaScript code is modifying uh, the HTML uh, output dynamically. Um, if I click uh, web page, it changes the web page to uh, bashscripts.info. Well, let's uh, let's change it or add to it that we can uh, change the image when we put our mouse over the image as well. This is something that's commonly done with HTML code. You normally, uh, or commonly, it's done with. Uh, buttons or, or menus so that when you hover your cursor over something it changes uh, the look of it so that you know that you can click it. So what we'll do here is uh, we will um, add to our image tag here which really uh, to be proper should end in a forward slash like that so I'm just going to add that now. Um, it's not needed but it's proper and you really should do things proper to make it as compatible as as you can with as many different browsers. So anyway, what we're going to add is we're going to add a, uh, a line that says on mouse over equals and then we're going to give it a function and we'll say new img for image. That's our function we created earlier. It's the same function that's called down here by the change image button. It's the function up here that changes the document element of image one, the idea of image one, which is this image here, it changes the source of it to a new uh, PNG file, which is Tux3. So if we save this real quick, the page looks the same. I can click and change the image back and forth. I can change the web output there, the little text. But now if it's the Mario, I can hover over him. Oh, and he changes to the uh, standard little uh, tux. Well, I guess it's not the standard tux, but the regular little tux guy. We can always change it back, hover over. But how do we get so it changes back when you remove the mouse from it? Well, we just add a little bit more of a bit of information to our image tag here. And what we're going to add is the line, or not the line, but a little other option on mouse out. So if the mouse moves out of the image, what are we going to do? We're going to run another function. It will be, oops, I accidentally grabbed that quotation from over there. It's fine, we'll use it. Uh, we'll go to our function that we already have created called old img and give it the parentheses there and close the quotes. Now if we save that, we have Mario there. We can go change image, change image back, change image, change image back. We can change uh, the text there. But now when we have our cursor over it, it changes to the standard text when we move away, it changes back. So once again, that's commonly used uh, when you're creating buttons to just draw people's eye to that when you hover over something and know they can click it. But here we're changing an entire image like so. Uh, let's add a little bit more to our functions. So basically we do have this uh, my web function which changes the text right here to say bash scripts.info. How about we uh, have it so when you hover over the image it changes that text to say something about the image. We'll do that simply as doing basically the same exact thing down here. I would normally copy and paste, although people say that's bad to do when you're programming. But since we're doing a tutorial, we'll type it out just for repetitive nature, reviewing. So we're going to say document, which is our HTML page. We're going to look for an element by ID. The ID of the element we want is called test2, because that's what we called this text here, this paragraph right here. And we're going to change the inner HTML. So dot inner HTML. And what are we going to change it? We're going to change it. Let's just have it say tux3. Close the quotations and don't forget your semicolon. We're going to do basically the same thing down here in our other function for the old image. And we're going to say document dot get element by ID test2. And we're going to change the inner HTML of it to equal tux1. And actually, this should be tux3 here. There is no tux2 currently. Okay. 
Uh, so don't forget our semicolon there. We should be able to save that. Now, when the page refreshes, we have our default here. If I say change image, you see it changes the image to tux1 and it says tux1 right there. If I say change back, ah, hold on. I'm just typing stuff wrong. That should say tux3 there. So again, page refreshes. It says films by Chris, and we have the image of Tux as Mario. See, when I hover over it, it changes. When I hover over it, it shows uh, the standard Tux there, and it says Tux 3 below the image. When I move the mouse away, it goes back to the Mario, and it says Tux 1. In fact, let's, uh, let's call it Mario. We'll change the text to say Mario. So now doesn't say it here, but once we hover and go away, it says Mario whenever it is Mario. Uh, we can change the web page back, so it says bash scripts and info, but once again, once we hover over, it changes the text as well. And the same thing happens since we're calling the same functions when we click these buttons. When it's Mario, it says Mario. When it's not, it says Tux3. So I hope you're enjoying these JavaScript tutorials, trying to keep things simple. I hope that you keep on watching. Visit the links in the description. I'll have this uh, code posted there. And I hope that you have a great day.